because of the compaction the engineering behavior of the soils and the properties of the soil such as structure and permeability compressibility these properties are also changed so we have to understand these properties properly so first is the structure of the soil so if it is the optimum moisture content so the part on the left of the optimum moisture content is it is called as dry of optimum and the right side it is known as wet of optimum so if the compactive effort is given let's see for this curve if compactive effort is given then on the if the soil is compacted on the dry of optimum side then it is it will be having more flocculated structure and if it is compacted on the wet side of optimum then it will be having more dispersed structure and then if we talk about the uh, constant water content so if the water content content is this then when the compactive effort is increased so this curve corresponds to the greater compactive effort then it produces a more dispersed structure or you can say more oriented for increasing the uh, compactive effort on the wet side of optimum also the arrangement or alignment of the particle gets dispersed but the increase in the unit weight on the dry side of optimum is more if we con compare it with the wet side of optimum so two points can be uh, found out from this that first for for a given compactive effort given compactive effort wet of optimum gives dispersed structure and for given water content the dry of optimum dry of optimum gives more increase in gamma d if compactive effort is increased increased the next point is permeability so when the water content is increased then the permeability of the soil decreases this is true up to omc or you can say the least permeability occurs slightly above the omc and after the omc the permeability starts increasing because the particles are displaced and the water starts entering into those particles so the permeability will be more and after that the next point is compressibility so if if we are talking about the low stresses then on the dry side of optimum it is less compressible because the interparticle forces hold the soil properly because of interparticle forces and on the wet side of optimum is more compressible if we are talking at low stresses but at higher stresses higher means at such a stress that these interparticle uh, this first of all it will be a flocculated structure on the dry side of optimum so if stresses are higher such that this flocculated structure is broken then 
uh, the dry side of optimum it has more tendency to compress so it will compress more than the wet side of optimum this light will compress less at higher stresses next point is the swelling behavior so swelling also when flocculated structure is there so it can more water can enter into the pores and so swelling will be more is more on dry side of optimum and on the wet side of optimum it will be less because water can more wet water cannot enter into the pores because less pores are there in that case and for shrinkage shrinkage will occur when the uh, soil becomes dry so in the flocculated structure because the interparticle forces will hold the structure so shrinkage will be less but in the dispersed structure these particles are aligned properly so they can shrink more so the shrinkage is more on the wet side of optimum next point is stress strain relationship stress strain so on the dry side of optimum the stress will be increased and strain will be strain will not increase as such but at higher stresses this structure will break completely this is for dry side and for wet of optimum this strain will increase as the stress increases this is strain and stress it will not show peak and as it does and after that construction of pore water pressure pore water so if we are compacting the soil on the wet of optimum so when loads are placed on this soil then pore pore water pressure is developed because of the water which is there in the pore so if it is on the wet side of optimum then more pore water will be pore water pressure will be developed and with time it will settle more so it is always not it is not always necessary to compact the soil at omc other factors are also there which affect these properties because if water content is more than the uh, time based settlement is more and so it is necessary to factor all these things while designing the compaction test or the required compaction in the field and so generally it is preferred to compact at a lower water content than omc the lower water content than optimum moisture content now there are some general methods or general equipments which are used for a type of soil this is important for the exams so rammers can be used for all the soils but it cannot be used for a big project because uh, the size will not be as big and smooth field rollers can be used for crushed rocks gravels and sands pneumatic tire rollers are used for all the soils sand gravel silt clay but it is not suitable for uniformly graded soils or uniformly graded sand and sheep foot rollers are good for clay soils it is very important it is asked a lot of times and vibratory vibratory rollers are used for sands this is it for compaction